In this experiment, you will be counting beta decays using a Geiger counter and then using a data acquisition device to generate a computer data file. The Geiger counter senses particles that make it through a thin and delicate mica window on top here. The physical controls on the Geiger counter on the left are off, on, audio counts, and battery test switch settings. On the right, we have the count range settings. You multiply the meter scale at the top by the range setting on the right. For this experiment, you want to use the largest count range for the greatest sensitivity for your computer-aided counts. On the bottom of the gear counter is a port that we will use to connect to the data acquisition device. This is a data acquisition device, which I will call DAC for short. The DAC has numerous screw turn models on the left and on the right. These are for measurements. The USB port on the top is for interfacing with the computer. We want to connect the guide count to the DAC through terminals that are labeled PFI8 and DGND. There are several terminals on the DAC labeled D, G, and D, so just use the one closest to PFI8. Now let's learn how to attach a wire to a terminal. Each screw down model consists of two metal plates, which you can press against a wire to make a connection. You can turn a screw on top clockwise, and that will make the bottom plate come up. You turn it the other way counterclockwise, the bottom plate will go down. You can put a wire between the bottom and top plate, and then turn the screw clockwise to tighten. When it's moderately tight, Gently wiggle the wire to make sure that the connection is good, and then you're done. This is the interface cable between the Geiger counter and the DAC. This end goes into the bottom of the Geiger counter, and these wires go into the DAC. The red wire goes into PFI8, the black wire goes into D, G, and D. When you've finished your hardware setup, download the counting program from the course wiki and save it to your desktop. Open the program, and you'll see that there's a front panel down below with a little uh, toolbar above that. The front panel is where you can change the settings and monitor the program as it progresses through its measurements. So I'm going to configure the program to my liking, and then I will run the program by pressing the little run arrow on the toolbar. Now the first count that you see on, on the current count rate display there is actually probably going to be wrong because of how the program initializes this. But don't worry, the program automatically discards that first data point. Now at some point the program will complete and then a, a window will pop up asking where to save the data. So again, I'm going to save it on the desktop, and I'm going to call the data 20 seconds, or 20 data points, one second, dot CSV. Now, a quick note about running the program. Uh, if you make a mistake and need to stop the program, there are two ways to do that. You can use the big stop button on the bottom, or you can use the little stop sign icon, the abort execution button on the toolbar. For our purposes, they do the same thing, but in a more sophisticated program, you want to use the big stop button on the bottom because that gives a more graceful exit. The program does all the stuff it needs to do before it stops.